Very, very quickly, John chapter 4, verse 23. John chapter 4, verse 23. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Lord bless his word in Jesus name. Speaking quickly on the subject. Your dedication and your worship. Your dedication and your worship. Is there any link between your dedication and your worship? That is what our objective is. Understanding the link between your dedication and your worship. It is important to know that heartfelt worship is a mark of true dedication to God. Heartfelt worship. Dedicated people are deep worshippers. They are deep praisers. You know that a person is dedicated to God by their intensity of praise. Abraham understood worship. Genesis 22 and in verse 5. Abraham said, wait for us here. Abide ye here with the earth. And I and the Lord will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Abraham was going to sacrifice his child and he called it worship. He understood worship. Example number two. Moses understood worship. In Exodus chapter 15 verse 1. When they came out of Egypt. Then sang Moses. And the children of Israel. This song unto the Lord and spake saying. I will sing unto the Lord. For he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider he has thrown into the sea. Moses understood worship. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 22. We saw how Moses even wrote a song. Moses therefore wrote this song. Moses was a songwriter the same day. Example number three. David understood worship. David the dedicated. In fact, David was worship personify until he was called the sweet psalmist of Israel. Second Samuel chapter 23 verse 1. This be the words, the last words of David. The son of Jesse said, the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel. Psalm 119 verse 164, David said, seven times a day do I praise thee. So Abraham understood worship. Moses understood worship. David was worship personified. Example number four. Solomon. Who loved the Lord. According to first Kings chapter three verse three. Solomon who loved the Lord. Also understood worship. Until a whole book of the Bible is titled Songs of Solomon. 
First Kings chapter 4 verse 32. Solomon wrote songs. He spake 3,000 proverbs and his songs were a thousand and five. Finally, Paul the apostle understood worship. Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. Philippians chapter 4 and in verse 4, Paul the apostle speaking saying, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, Rejoice. So if you are dedicated, you will be a worshiper, you will be a praiser, you won't be a murmurer, you won't be a grumbler. Now, what does worship signify? Number one, worship is a mark of affection for God. You love God, you worship him. You are dedicated to God, you will love him, you, will, you love him, you worship him. Psalm 86 verse 12. And then Psalm 42, verse 1 to 2. As the heart pants after the water brooks, so my heart, soul pants after you. That is the heart of a worshiper. Worship is a mark of affection for God. Lovers of God are worshippers of God. You know a man's love for God by his worship of God. Number two, worship is proof of reverence you you reverence god so you worship him psalm 89 verse 1 and then verse 7 i will sing of the mercies of the lord forever i will sing of the mercies of the lord with my mouth will i make known thy faithfulness to all generation. And then we shift. God is greatly to be feared. In the assembly of the saints. That was why he was worshipping like that. Greatly to be feared. And to be had in reverence. Of all them that are about him. We reverence him. We reverence him. So we worship him. First of all, we love him, so we worship him, and then we reverence him. Thirdly, worship is proof of submission. We are in submission to him, so we worship him. Worship is proof of submission. It's proof of submission. Dedicated people are submitted to God and because they are submitted to God, they worship him. Psalm 95 verse 6 to 7. 95 6 to 7 he said, Oh come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God. Let us worship, let us bow. Submission. When your submission is confirmed, your worship is established. That is why we lie down most times. That is why we do all manner of things. So worship is proof of our love. The deeper your love, the deeper your worship. Worship is proof of our reverence. And worship is proof of our submission. Somebody asked me the other day. She said, How is it that God uses you to write songs that can make somebody both cry and be happy at the same time? I think many people have asked such questions and I realized that there is a connection between your spirituality and what I will call your hymnology or songology. You cannot
not bring out anything deeper than who you are. Am I communicating at all? You can't. It's not possible. So the deeper our love, the deeper our reverence, and the deeper our submission, so deep will be our worship. Moving from there. What are the products of worship? Your worship. Our worship. Okay, let me talk to you. One, your worship of God enhances your value in life. It enhances your value. You can't be a person of zero value if you are a genuine worshiper. David moved from being a mere shepherd boy in the wilderness to becoming the man after God's heart. According to 1 Samuel chapter 13 verse 14. 1 Samuel 13 14. And then Acts 13 22. Worship, your worship enhances your value. No devil, no man, no woman, no system can devalue a worshiper. It enhances your value, your worth. Worship is confirming his worth to him. His worship. You cannot give him his worth and lose your own worth. You can't be a worshiper and end up a washout. Your worship enhances your value. Number two, your worship of God provokes his focus on you. Your worship of God provokes his focus on you. The hour coming and now is where the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such. Other people look for God, but God looks for the worshipper. Your worship makes you a center of his attention. There are people God focuses on. There are those who look at someone and say, are you the only one? Your worship of him provokes his focus on you. Somebody is stepping to that realm. Number three, your worship of God attracts his presence to you. It's like the other one, but it's a bit different. The other one is focused on you, but, the, but this one is present with you. Your worship of God attracts his presence to you. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound they shall walk in the light of his countenance. Psalm 89 verse 15. God's presence is fillable with the worshiper. Is fillable. So your worship of him enhances your value. The worship of him provokes his focus on you. The worship of God attracts his presence to you. Number four, your worship of God releases his favor on you. It releases his favor on you. Your worship of God releases his favor on you. You see what the Bible said in Acts 2 47 they were praising God and having favor it releases his favor on you doors open for the worshiper people see you they like you without knowing why 
by God's mercies, everything I'm talking about is what I have experienced and I'm experiencing as the products of true worship. Releases his favor on you. Those that people look for, look for you. That shall be your portion. Was that number four? Number five. Your worship of God releases his giftings in you. His giftings. His giftings. The gifts inside you come out when you are a genuine worshiper. That was what happened to Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 5 to 6. 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 5 to 6. You shall come to the hill of God where is the garrison of the Philistines and it shall come to pass. When thou art come thither to the city that you shall see a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and a tablet and a pipe and a harp before them and they shall prophesy. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you shall prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man. Saul was never known to be a prophet. But he came into the climate of worship. And as he did so, boom, prophetic conscience came out of him. Your worship of God, you come to a point where the gifts inside you begin to, to come out. Graces, apostolic, prophetic, managerial, leadership, financial skills, all manner of things begin to come out of you as you continue to be a, a deep worshiper. Somebody will experience that shortly. You believe that? Say loud, amen. amen. That was number, number five. And number six, your worship of him facilitates his guidance for your life. His guidance of your life. That is, you are not permitted to be missing road as a worshiper. Psalm 89 verse 15 again said, Blessed is the people that love the joyful son. They shall walk in the light of your countenance. Their, their steps are guided by the light of your face. That is, you, 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 you. By the light that comes from your presence, they know what step to take. What business to invest in. Who to marry. Somebody say amen. How many of you know that God can guide you without talking to you? I believe it was in Psalm 32 verse 8 where he said, I will guide you with my eyes. I will instruct you and keep you. In the way which thou should go. I will instruct you and teach you. In the way which you should go. I will guide you with my eye. You know how a, a parent guides a child with the eye. When visitors come and the child is trying to run to collect the cook. From the, 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 the man and the, the, the mother look with one eye. And the child heard something without hearing a voice. And he just runs off immediately because... He knows that uh, Cain will be waiting if he dares to collect that mineral from the God says, I will, I may not, it is not all the time I will be saying something to you, but many times I will talk to you without words. When you are a worshiper, you remember 2 Kings chapter 3 from verse 15, that even at that time there, there was a need for Elisha to hear the voice of God and the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha and he heard the voice of God guidance guidance the last time you miss road shall be the last forever somebody shout the loudest amen shout the loudest amen lift your right and say in the name of Jesus I shall not miss road another day in my life say it louder I cannot miss road another day in my life. Give the Lord a shout of prayer. So if it is so wonderful to, to worship God. What are the keys to productive worship? Doing it well. Number one. Worship should 
be focused on the person and character of God. Worship should be focused on the person and character of God. We want to worship him not just because of what we want to get out of him. Or because of what he did before. That is part of our worship. But for who he is. These people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise is some. Isaiah 43 verse 21. They shall show forth my praise. I formed you to praise me. Psalm 29 verse 2. Worship him in the beauty of holiness. Not just because I'm looking for money. Lord, I come before your majesty. Not to see what I can get from you. But to see what I can give. To you, Lord, I come before your majesty, not to see what I can get from you, but to see what I can give to you. What can I give? But what can I give that you don't have? Oh, and what do I have that I did not get from? But what can I give that you don't have, O oh Lord? But what can I give that you don't have, O oh Lord? That you don't have. And what do I have that I did not get from you? That I did. With that conclusion, so so I bring my praise to you. I bring my praise to you. Lord, I bring my praise. Lord, you know. on the person and character of God. There are times when we are in a healing or deliverance service and when you say lift your hands and let us worship God. Some people will be lifting up prayer requests. Some people will be lifting up picture of somebody. That's, that's a very wrong approach. You don't present your, you don't, you don't confront God with your need. No, not, not, not first. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That is, I worship you. You do all that before you can say, give us this day our daily bread. You begin with, with, with focus on God. You must be focused on God. Worship should be focused on the person of God. Number two, worship should be done from the heart. Not from the lips. He said, these people honor me with their lips. But their hearts are far. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 13. Their hearts are far from me. These people draw near me with their mouth. And with their lips they honor me. But have removed their heart far from me. Whether you are singing in the congregation or singing as a, 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 a lead vocalist or anybody you are, please let it come from the heart. When you say, Lord you know, Lord you know that my love for you is a real let, let it come from the heart that is think think over the words the wordings let let the lyrics make sense let it move you let it touch you say they shall worship in spirit and in truth in spirit and in truth 
in spirit and in truth. Somebody say amen. Let no music minister or worshiper be an entertainer forever. Never be. Worship should be done from the heart, not from the lips. Finally, worship should be done from a clear conscience. The Bible said, worship in the beauty of holiness. It should be done from a clear conscience. In 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13, those worshipping during the dedication of the temple of Solomon, the Bible said they were wearing white linen garment. They were wearing white linen. In Psalm 29, verse 2, where we read before, he said we should worship in the beauty of holiness. I can't pay you, Lord. I can't pay you, Lord. There's nothing I can give that makes any sense. I can't pay you, Lord. I can't pay you, Lord. There's nothing I can give that makes any sense. I would have been forever lost But for your love I would have been forever lost Oh Lord, but for your grace I would have been forever lost But for your love Forever long. You pulled me many times. You pulled me many times. At the verge of danger, you pulled me. At the verge of danger. You pulled me many times. You pulled me many times. At the verge of danger. You pulled me many times. We said I would have been forever lost, which means I was lost, not now. I can't say I am still lost. That is, we are worshiping in the beauty of holiness. That is when our worship is acceptable.